welcome back guys. Today I want to be talking about this belt right here. This is, as you can see on here, a Blue Alpha Gear uh, EDC belt. This one, they make two different models of this belt. Um, this is the only one I have currently. Uh, the other model that they make is one without a Cobra buckle and it's cheaper. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit here in a second. Um, but I've been using this belt for a little over a year now, uh, maybe closer to two years. But I've been using this belt just about every single day and I absolutely love this thing. Um, right now, I just checked, it's not available on Amazon, but you can find it other places. The pricing is going to be a little bit more expensive than I, what I paid for it, which was about $70. And again, this was a year and a half ago, somewhere around there. Um, I've tried a bunch of EDC belts um, throughout the years, and I've never found one that I just absolutely loved until I got this one. Now, this one still has some drawbacks, and I'll go over those. Um, but for the most part, um, this is all positive. Now, I will say this um, belt is rather expensive. This one right here, whenever I bought it, $70. So now again, this comes with a authentic Cobra buckle, which you can see on there, it says Cobra. Ooh, fancy. All right, but there's a bunch of belts out there that are similar to this one that are kind of knockoffs and I haven't tried those. Maybe they're decent, maybe they're not. Maybe you can put down in the comments below if you have one of those and just let us know how it works. But this one I've been using again for a while and it's a pretty simple belt. Um, it's a very sturdy material. So you can see like I can crush it just barely, but it takes a good amount of force. I would say this is somewhere kind of in the middle of a regular, say, leather belt and like a really thick belt, like something like this. This is one of those really thick, like cowhide leather belts. And I started out with this thing whenever I was looking for an EDC belt, and I absolutely hate this thing. Um, pro tip if you are looking for an EDC belt and you think, oh, well, a thick leather belt will do good. I mean, yeah, sure, it'll hold the gun just fine, it'll keep it from moving, and all that fun stuff, but it looks like you're wearing an inner tube underneath your shirt, uh, around your pants, whenever you're wearing this thing. It just sticks out like crazy. So what I mean by that is whenever you tuck it through, and you loop it around, let's see if I can do this for you. Alright, so on here, once you tuck it through, you can see how thick that is. It's massive. So, whereas on this little Glock 43, if you were to mount this thing on here, which is what I always did, sorry, behind the camera. So it locks in there and it has good retention. Sorry, hitting the camera. So it has good retention, it locks in place, and you can easily draw. And sorry, all these guns are hot. I carry them. Sorry, get over it. Um, it locks over really, really well. So I like that. But the problem, again, is this little tiny gun, I wear it whenever I don't want to print or I'm wearing something that's... You know, I don't want to just scream gun whenever I'm walking around. I don't care about printing that much, but I also don't just want an imprint of a gun just like sticking out of my stomach. So that's why I will carry this gun sometimes. Most of the time I carry this gun right here, it's Glock 19. But if I carry any of those guns with this belt, because this thing is so thick, it forces the gun out more. And again, I'm a skinny dude, so maybe you wouldn't have this problem, but I did. So it made the gun print way more. So with using this belt and the Glock 43 over there, even though it's basically half the size of this gun right here, this gun actually printed less with this belt than that one did with this belt. So this one right here. So just know that getting into it, if you get a leather belt that's really thick, it works fine, but just know, again, it's gonna look like an inner tube under your shirt. So you can see the belt all the way around my shirt because it just kind of hangs on it and it doesn't hide well at all. Now, if you're wearing like a, you know, a jacket or something like that, then that's not an issue, but just know that if you're wearing a t-shirt, this thing's gonna show. So I. I think I've used this thing maybe six or seven times that I've never used again since then, since I bought this belt here. Now before that, I was using this really, th this is like an old American Eagle, or I don't remember where I got this thing. This thing's super old. I've had it since I was in high school, so that's like 20 years ago. But anyways, this thing's pretty old, and I use this every now and then just as like a regular belt. And this thing is super flimsy, and it'll hold, you know, the smaller gun kind of okay, but if I try to put something like that on here, it just flops all over the place and it doesn't hold it right. So. Again, don't use something like this unless, I mean, that, if that, that's all you got, fine. But I love this belt, and let's get back to this thing. Um, again, $70, so it's not the cheapest thing on the planet, but a lot of the other options out there are over $100, so consider that it is pretty cheap. So it uses a Cobra buckle, which is nice, and this is their EDC model, so it's designed to go underneath the belt loops. So on most pants, this side will not fit underneath the belt loop, so you'll have to feed your belt in through this side, wrap it around, and then click it back into place over here. You might think, you know, that's, oh, why do you need a giant Cobra buckle for 
your EDC. And the reason I got it is not because, you know, I want to go cliff, you know, jumping or cliff climbing or whatever you want to call it. Like, I don't need this to hold up my weight. I just don't want to wear out the Velcro that's right here. So it has Velcro, as you can see. So you can change adjustments. I put a little mark there so I knew where it went for my body size. And you can adjust it to exactly where you want it for your body size. And then once it's there, all you have to do is worry about buckling, unbuckling. You don't have to undo the Velcro every single time to put on the belt and then reattach it. And Velcro, as you know, will wear out over time. So that's why I got the belt, uh, the Cobra buckle. Because I didn't want the Velcro to wear out and then I would have to buy a new belt, you know, in five, six years or however long the Velcro lasted. I'd rather just spend double the amount now and have this belt essentially last forever. And after years of use, hasn't deformed at all. Still very rigid. Haven't had an issue. So you can see how thick it is right here. I'll give you a comparison. So if you're used to a Glock 19, so this is a Glock 19, you can see about how thick it is. It's thicker than, I would say it's about as thick as a normal leather belt. So again, this is a really, really thin flimsy belt. And you can see how thin it is compared to that. This is about as thick as your average, I'd say, dress belt. You know, like for if you wear something, say on Sundays at church or, you know, you're dressing up to go to a show or something and you're wearing a thick leather fancy belt, that's about how thick this thing is. So it, it conceals pretty well. Um, it's not the most comfortable thing to wear. I'm used to wearing a duty belt all the time, so my hips have calluses just all over the place, so my skin is like leather around my waist, so it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, but the buckle, depending on where it's situated, you know, can be a little bit uncomfortable. And again, because this isn't flexible, um, it can dig into your hips somewhat. Now, if you, if you aren't bony like I am, then that may not be an issue for you. But it was for me. So one thing you can do, and people think, oh, like if you put this up front, it's thick, it's got this belt buckle, and if you appendix carry, this is gonna get in the way. That's true. So if you tried to appendix carry and this thing's right in the middle and you're trying to put it either on this side or this side, it's just gonna make that print that much more. And say you wanna put uh, the holster on there, and then you also wanna use something like this, you know, put it on the other side, it's just really bulky. So something that I've done over the years to kind of mitigate that is instead of feeding this through in the front, like, you know, where your zipper and button would be on your pants, I actually feed it back through probably around the four o'clock position around that belt loop. I start there, work my way around the front, and then I actually click this back behind me. So if this is the front of my body facing that way, it looks something about like this. So this side up here is actually what's in front of me, makes it a lot thinner. And then there's all this real estate that I can attach, you know, the gun to the extra magazine to, and it all fits wherever I want it to. And this extra thick stuff doesn't get in the way. And this belt buckle doesn't get in the way because depending on your holster, this might be too thick for your holster to fit around. So to give you an idea, like say this holster, this is a works. I don't know if I've gone over this holster before. See if you can see W E R K Z. Um, they're okay. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend getting this. If you can find another option that fits your gun and your light specifically, this was, and again, these guns are hot. You'll have to get over it. Um, this is the only holster I could find that fit this combination of gun, the Glock 19 Gen 5 and with the Olight val Mini Valkyrie. So it's it's a little thin. Uh, the Kydex should be thicker and it would have more retention right now. It doesn't have as much retention as I would like. It comes out relatively easy compared to this Glock 43, which has, you can hear that click, that retention, it's a lot better. Now again, just because that's locking on the trigger guard, this is locking on the light, so you know, take it for what it's worth. But it's a decent holster if you can't find anything else fit your gun, but if you can find something else, I'd recommend something else. But anyway, so what I was showing you on here, if you're trying to put this over here, it will lock in place. Like you see, it'll lock over this one. Depending on the holster though, it like on this one right here, it just makes it stick out that much further, this part right here. So, and again, for me, I'm really skinny. So every bit I can uh, cheat with, I guess, to any little thing I can do to make it print less, I'm gonna do. So again, if you want to, you can have this in facing forward and just put it, it's a little unorthodox and it took me a little while to get used to, but now I just do it naturally. And whenever I put on one of the other belts for whatever I'm doing, sometimes I'll start doing that. I'm like, oh, don't need to do that. So I'll take it back off, put it back on. But anyways, so that's a little trick um, that will help you conceal better because again, you have all this flat real estate right here and it's a lot easier to put on. It doesn't print as less as much. Now, if you carry, you know, say the, the four o'clock position or somewhere else, you know, in Panic Scary, you know, you could put this up front. It wouldn't be a big deal. And this thing doesn't, this belt doesn't print. Uh, I wear t-shirts, you know, 99% of the time. And I've never had this belt like show through like I did uh, this other thick cowhide. One negative thing about this, I will say, is if you have a holster like this, where it clips over like that and it just clips on, 
this will work just fine. Again, this is, I think this has actually been discontinued. I think it's Kernel Blades or something like that. Uh, Warrior Poet Society actually had this in one of his video and I bought it because I thought it was pretty cool and it was a good idea for states where I went where say I couldn't carry a firearm. Um, this is a good option, but I don't think it's, it's discontinued now, so good luck finding one. But even something like this, you know, will fit over it just fine. You can pull it out. It's nice. So one thing I don't like about this belt, and i kind of gone over this a little bit, is in order to put on something, say, like this leather holster right here, where it doesn't have the clips, it just has the clip throughs, or the little slots for the belt, um, you have to take this piece of the Cobra buckle off, which is not a big deal. I mean, you just undo the Velcro and slide it through, and then you can slide it through the leather hoops on here, then put it back on. But again, I got this for the Cobra buck buckle itself, so I didn't have to wear that Velcro out all the time. So if you're using something like this leather holster, or if you're using something like this holster right here, where it has the solid loops all the way through. Now again, I wouldn't recommend this type holster for EDC, but if you're using this for like a range or something, um, this belt may not be the best choice for you. I would go ahead at that point and just buy the Velcro version, which I think is like half the price. It's around $30, $35, somewhere in there. And it doesn't have the Cobra buckles. It's just, it's just uh, this Velcro. And so it just stays attached with Velcro. And that would save you money. Um, but if you're using any sort of, again, clip like this, um, this is what I would go with because your belt's going to last a lot longer. One last thing I wanted to go over too is the reason you want a thick belt like this or a rigid belt like this is so whenever you draw, your belt doesn't come with your gun whenever you try to draw. Um, a lot of belts either will flex and then it'll mess up your draw and then you'll, you know, your gun or your holster or your belt or all of the above will get tangled in your shirt and it'll just make drawing a whole lot harder. So having a good sturdy belt, uh, one, will make your draw significantly smoother. Um, also just comfort of carry. Whenever you're using, you know, a flimsy belt like this or even just a normal leather belt, uh, your gun's going to move around a whole lot. So whenever I appendix carry with, you know, say this gun or even that small Glock 43, whenever it's uh, attached to the leather belt, this thing will sag or it'll move off to the side, you know, left and right or it'll fall forward. And it's just because the belt is not holding this gun in place because, I mean, the gun's heavy compared to the belt. So whenever you have something rigid like this, kind of like a duty belt, it keeps everything in place and it doesn't get, it keeps it from moving around. Again, this is, you know, it's made in the USA, so if you like that kind of thing, uh, kudos to them. One thing I will say about the sizing, uh, my waist size for most of the pants I wear is 30. I bought the 30 belt size, and it fits perfectly. It still has got adjustment either direction. So if you order this, order your actual pant size, and it will fit just fine. Um, the buckle, I think I already mentioned this, but I'll mention it one more time. Again, this side will not go through belt loops. Um, I, they... They could make the smaller where it could, but I mean, it really doesn't matter. Just always, I just always feed this side in. Not a big deal. I wear multiple different types of pants, whether they're, you know, the whole tactical, like 511 pants or true spec or those Ido gear pants or whatever. Fits through those belt loops just fine, and it fits through regular jeans just fine. Multiple different brands. Never had it not fit through um, the loops on my pants. So, that's cool. So, if you're looking for a good EDC belt, um, this would be the one I would recommend getting. Again, it's not the cheapest on the planet. Uh, but it's cheaper than most of the other quality belts that I've seen out there. So hopefully this helped y'all. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Hopefully y'all um, have a good one, and I appreciate y'all watching.